Guys, welcome to Smokefest. Uh, we're from Super Butcher. We're going to be talking today about some uh, Angus short ribs and we're using a Wagyu brisket today. Um, so we're going to start with short ribs. We're going to show you how to trim. We're going to talk about some cooking methods on it, some different style cuts you can get out of it as well, rubbing your meat and then uh, something similar for the brisket as well with a bit more of a further breakdown showing you, you know, where your point and your flat comes from. All right, so we'll start with short ribs. And uh, there is a small layer of fat that runs along the top of your short ribs there. But underneath that, there is a silver skin that's underneath it. So we're going to remove most of that fat and also that silver skin. So when we do rub our meat, we really want to focus a lot of that flavor directly on the meat. Um, that silver skin will stay quite tough through the cooking process. Um, so again, I know we all love a bit of fat, but we, the goal is here to get rid of that silver skin. So trim a bit of fat away. It'll help your rub or your salt penetrate through the meat better, a, bit, a little bit better as well. So the silver skin can block that salt from going through. So you might be looking at this and saying, I'm not gonna do that at home. If you come down to your butchers, ask them to do it. We'll gladly help you out. We'll trim it up. We'll re-cryvac it if you want to use it next weekend or something. Uh, and then it's ready to rub and cook straight away. What a lot of people don't know about vacuum sealing, which is something that we do at all of our stores, is that for boneless beef, it means that once you take it out of that big bag, like one of these, we can cut it into single steaks for you, or if you're in a couple, two steaks at a time. They pack down really easy in the freezer. They can freeze for up to two years as well because they don't get freezer burned because there's no oxygen in the bag at all. And boneless beef can last for up to 10 days in your fridge. So that means you can get almost two weeks out of it. Bone and stuff can last as long, but um, it's a little bit trickier to keep. So we recommend around the five day mark. Right, so we've trimmed all of the exterior fat now off this rib. You can see it's exposed to beautiful marbling through the rib there as well. Um, which isn't the be-all and end-all to beef, but it definitely helps when you're doing a very low and slow cook. Um, and generally what you would do with ribs as well, which again, it's a little bit easier when you're not wearing gloves, but most, your beef and your pork ribs will have a membrane that runs along the back here, and there's two layers to a membrane. So you really just want to get that first layer off. The best tip I can give you is use a bit of paper towel or something, which we don't have. Um, and you just pick at the edges until you can get that membrane and you want to peel that off because that helps your ribs pull back and then when you're ready to eat them they don't stick to it as well which I'm probably not going to be able to show you today here's one we prepared earlier it has no membrane on it yeah yeah all right well that's about it for that one so I'm going to pass over to Jaden he's going to talk about rubbing your meat um, and some different cooking methods if you're cooking a whole rack and then we'll have a look at a, a few other styles once he's done as well. So, there you go, Jaden. Nice rack of ribs for you, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. Can I take this one home? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, short ribs, obviously, the best thing that we like to do with them is to smoke them, which is why we're all here today. Um, we really enjoy using like a barbecue rub. It adds flavor. Most barbecue rubs have an element of salt to it as well. The salt itself penetrates the meat and it can take a bit of flavor further through it. So, you know, sometimes if you're, say you're biting anything, really a steak that you've rubbed, you get that bite, you, the hit of flavor on the outside, but sometimes once you get to that second or third bite in, you can't taste anything except the meat. If we're using a rub, we pay good money for a rub, we want to taste the rub. So usually, I mean, a lot of people will rub things different times. How long before you're cooking something would you rub it? Yeah, just before it. Just before? Yeah, just before, yeah. So um, I usually go about 30 minutes. It just gives it that little bit of time. I find that if, you know, if you've got a little steak or something, the salt penetrates faster. So um, I only do that about 10 minutes before. So um, today we're gonna use um, one of our favorite rubs, which is Lane's Barbecue. Um, this is the signature rub. So this one, it's, um, it's not too offensive in any direction. It's really nice. It's just basic flavors that build on each other. So you, most of what you'll taste is, um, it's like black pepper, kosher salt are the two main ingredients and it goes down into granulated garlic. You get that beautiful color from the paprika, which goes into a lot of famous barbecue rubs. It gives it a good color and once it's smoked, it kind of turns to that dark 
really, really rich and decadent sort of looking color. It makes it glisten a little bit as well. Yeah, it's really well balanced. So what we want to do is a lot of people, they use a different quantity. I like to just do a nice even layer. Um, since this is a brand new rub, it's probably going to chunk out at once, but um, a nice even layer all the way around. Um, what a lot of people miss that we... Jaden you know, likes to rub the bench as well. Yeah. It's as much as possible on the bench. So I don't want to get my hands too dirty right now, but you really want to push it in. Um, what a lot of people seem to, seem to miss is the sides of the meat as well. So like we said, we want to get that flavor to penetrate. We want every bite to taste the same. You get that consistency, not only from the beef you use, but from what you put on it as well. Once um, you've taken the membrane off as well, you'll also do the back. We see this isn't one that we quite prepared earlier, but you want to get that even coating. This one's come off a little bit in the wind, but you want it all to look a similar color. So that way it's all going to taste the same at the end. Mm. Yeah, for me, I go heavy. This is, I, I load it up just like this. I get it right in there. I like a good coating. And then throughout the smoker, if you don't have a smoker, if you're baking in the oven, spritzing, which is uh, just a, a, a spray bottle with some water or some sort of liquid in it. I use water. Same bottle you use when your cat's being annoying and you want to give it a no, squirt. Not the same bottle. But um, <laughs> <laughs> just, it just stops that outside drying out too much and keeps it moist until your point. If you want to wrap it at some point, just keeps that outside nice and moist and stops your rub from drying out too much. Um, so that's a whole rack of ribs. If that's what you wanted to do, you would proceed with that. Uh, you'd cook at 120 Celsius or 250 Fahrenheit. Um, everyone's slightly different, but that's kind of the best middle ground. Um, so you smoke that for about three to four hours or bake it for three to four hours. Then you may wrap in some foil, some butter, or maybe a little bit of stock, um, cook it for another three hours. And ribs are a funny one. I don't really cook ribs to a temperature. Uh, eight hours is what I usually find is the best time. And at that point, I'll start to just just with my fingers, get the feel. If it starts to feel almost like meat jelly, if you will, um, that's what you're looking for. You want that fall apart, really tender rib. Um, so that's baking at whole. If you wanted to do braised ribs as well, you'd probably cut them into slightly smaller pieces uh, and braise them. Uh, so we'd probably do, you know, something like this. And then you can see now we've cut it, that beautiful marbling that runs through that rib. That's the Jack's Creek Angus. You'll, you'll nearly always find that with your Angus beef. Um, so if you wanted to do some braised ribs, you'd cut them like that. If you wanted to do something on the barbecue, more of a grill style, uh, you could do an asado cut rib. Now the one thing that, uh, I think the perception of ribs is that fall apart, melt in your mouth rib. The asado is not that. So you would cut these ribs along the three bones there, about a centimeter and a half thick. And then you would proceed to grill them on a hot barbecue for a couple of minutes aside. They won't be melt in your mouth, fall apart ribs, but the flavor that that rib will give you will be amazing. And just cutting that centimeter and a half, it's not extremely tough, uh, but it's got an amazing flavor, especially if you're cooking over charcoal. So they're your three main types of rib cuts. Any questions about ribs? If you do, come up and see me at the end. <laughs>